Skip Bayless. Let's talk about this. Woo! Let's talk about Shannon and Skip's beef. And Shannon skipping the show and then coming back, and y'all know how it went down. <laughs> it went <laughs> interrupted. They just call that she called that show interrupted, not LeBron's uninterrupted, not undisputed, but interrupted. Damn, this is crazy. Okay. I think this is a case of the classic never outshine the quote unquote master. And I ain't saying it in no racial way. So get out of my face and politicizing this. I'm talking about that show with Skip Bayless's. Y'all know that, right? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> 2000, what, 16? Skip Bayless leaves ESPN, gets that dough. Now I'm going to do that dough. He got that dough, dough, too. He got that, mm-hmm, that Pillsbury boy, that fat boy, though. Damn, he got that dough boy, that ice cube. <laughs> Jesus. But he deserved it because he was the face of the network. Him and Colin Coward. All right. So bow down, respect. But a lot has changed since then. Let's just talk about that. Ah, uh, you know, Skip's tweet. And there was nothing wrong with Skip's tweet, except you hit send at the wrong Pacific time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Max used to always say this. Max Kellerman, my dog. He said, uh, the time to clown the fat girl is not when she's coming from the gym with the sweaty wristbands. Y'all understand what that means? Basically, uh, there's a time and place for everything. And certainly the time is not when they're trying to do something else or it's trying times. (laughs) And Skip kind of missed that one. I thought the same thing he thought. I wasn't going to tweet it. I ain't thirsty for social like that. I'm not about to say, you know, my first thought and my first impulse. Here we go, send. And that's what got him in trouble. The timing. But what he said, somebody was really not only thinking that, somebody was saying that, and somebody was living that out for the NFL. So I ain't have a problem with the tweet. But since people got a problem with Skip, oh, they going to run with that tweet. You know why? Because that was a straw that broke the camel's back. And y'all know, a straw don't weigh nothing. (laughs) A straw don't weigh shit. But there's a lot of other straws on that camel's back, and they weigh a lot. People were kind of fed up with Skip, or they just wanted to give it to him. You know, they always try to stick it to him. If you're the villain, nothing people are happier about than sticking it back to you, right? So that's what that moment was. They was trying to give it back to Skip. Now... You add that, that the the world, the mob, whatever you want to call that force of people who just all get together and collect their information, say, we are going to stand by this together in solidarity and try and destroy and cancel your ass, right? So that's what we were, we were witnessing. Now, Skip doesn't do that show by himself. Does that show with Shannon Sharp, my dog, and Shannon Sharp. And Skip Bayless, eh, they showed us something there. I don't know if they like each other or not. People on the inside tell me they don't. People on the inside tell me they don't talk. But since I don't have their schedule now or then, <laughs> I certainly don't have it now because my ass ain't working up there. But I ain't even have it then. You got to remember, they go to they go to work, what, 630? They be up in there at 3, 4, 5 o'clock. Man, I ain't even stepping to that building to 11 o'clock. So I never saw them. Never, ne- never, nunca, never saw them. But, you know, in inside rep is, nah, they kind of good on each other. Whatever. That's conjecture. But maybe it's not because we saw it play itself out on live TV. Because Shannon once skipped the show. Now, he may be justified. Obviously, what happened to Sterling, his brother, nearly paralyzed and watching that that's devastating and then to see something that quote unquote is insensitive by the masses by your partner yeah you could be in your feelings you could be feeling a certain type of way me i was like dog i can't hang my teammate out to dry like that even if i got beef i'm coming up to the show the next day and the first topic is beef with you the second topic is more beef with you (laughs) you know what i mean like even if we don't like each other, even if the world and the mob is trying to cancel you and I'm kind of like wishing it happens and silently rooting for it, I'm still going to come up there and let you know, but I ain't them. 
and he didn't show. So then I'm sitting there like, man, cats are always, always talking about speak truth to power. And, you know, when they get all into they blackified and all that, speak truth to power. Yeah, y'all speak truth to power to it's your turn. <laughs> they say that. Speak truth to power to it's they turn to do it. Oh, fuck. If you don't step yourself up there and tell Skip Bayless how you really feel, but that day went by, right? So Skip, I didn't watch that show, but everybody was saying, you know, he, he did the show by himself. I don't know if he did good, bad, ugly, whatever. He did the show by himself. But now we get to the fun part. The next day, Shannon shows up. And Shannon should have the floor because Shannon's been gone. It's the elephant in the room. How Shannon's feeling. Get it out the way so we can have a regular show. And I'm watching like everybody else. No, no, no. Let me not lie. Let me not lie. That was a clip. Somebody sent me the clip, that part. And I'm watching the clip like, oh, he can't get through a minute of a monologue. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. All them cats told me that they ain't feeling each other. They ain't lying. God, duh. That was crazy. And now let's unpack it. Why is it like this? I ain't going to get into the, like what they said word for word, word for word. Y'all already seen that and dissected that. What's crazy is the bigger Shannon got on that show, the higher the tension got. Now, people are saying it's manufactured. They're doing it for ratings. And I, I feel some of that. Certainly, uh, you lean to whatever is going to help you out, whatever is going to give you and your, your show greater success incentives shape behavior right so i get that but what i don't get <laughs> is one people are saying shannon is being so classy by not responding he's being such a good citizen by not responding right everybody's just giving them props for that Y'all got to also understand, he knows he can't disrespect the bridge he crossed to get here. And that is Skip Bayless. But Skip is testing his Southern hospitality. Skip is testing all of Shannon's Southern hospitality. Because <laughs> Skip's an agitator. You know, commonly people call them people a-holes. <laughs> what was that movie with Meet the Parents or something? Like, a-hole, <laughs> little kid. Like, Skip does that on purpose. Because in real life, Skip's real nice. Like, I... Every time I see Skip, it's like a human bubble. Like, he's just so gentle, so, like, nice. You're like, everyone knows if you go to war with Skip on the show, he going to come for your neck. Everybody knows as soon as he say cut or, you know, go to break commercial, Skip the nicest dude in the world. And I'm not lying. Like, literally in the world, he's the nicest dude. So I was like, that's crazy to see. But. What's happening right now is Skip is realizing that Shannon needs to stay in his place in terms of the dynamic of that show. That's why he keeps flexing on Shannon. Put your glasses on. That's why he keeps flexing on Shannon. Won't let him get a sentence through. I'm not taking a tweet down. Even the day before, Skip said that the bosses said something. Then the next day when Shannon brings it up, oh, the bosses didn't say anything. This is a flex because he thinks that Shannon is trying to flex because Shannon is just growing in popularity. Maybe he's post-traumatic stress. Because didn't this happen with Stephen A and him? A lot of people told me that. I don't remember the beats of that. But Stephen A kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it started to go a different way. Maybe he's rel reliving that. I don't know. But all I know is if somebody's trying to cancel my partner, I'm there for my partner. But I also know my partner can't be trying to flex on me because my partner shook. Because if we're really teammates, the better me is the better we. And that's what I don't get about their relationship from afar. You know, you got to just show up if you're Shannon. Check him. And if you skip, he shows up. You got to shut it. You got to let him have his. At least a minute worth. Let him get it off his chest. Then y'all could just beef off what he said. But you can't even beef or have a debate as you want to all the time. Because you ain't even let him get it out. It's crazy. I'm talking about two dudes older than me <laughs> beefing off of social media, you know, bots and 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 just eggs. Well, I guess uh, Elon got rid of the eggs, but whatever. 
it's a sad state of affairs that it felt like there was tension in the air based off of them listening to others. It's always that, right? Miscommunication or no communication, even worse. Takes me back to when I played in Ryan Leaf. <laughs> Y'all remember Ryan Leaf? Everybody call him the greatest bust. That's cold. Y'all wrong. But Ryan Leaf, I remember hearing his old lineman tell me that he was such an ass. They got so mad at him that there were times where they wouldn't block for him just to set him straight, teach him a lesson. Are you kidding me? Man, like you can be a teammate with somebody, but hang them out to dry. That's what that reminded me of. Like, damn. They both kind of hanging each other out to dry, right? Like Shannon not showing up, Skip not letting them talk, Skip trying to punk them, Skip trying to say, so what? When Shannon said he was a Hall of Famer, he said, so what? <laughs> oh, if I'm Shannon, I'm like, it's time to go to the club. Shay, Shay, <laughs> I'm out, dog. What are we doing here? Because you're trying to say I ain't better than Brady, but you know I'm better than you because you ain't even in the competition. Ah, see, this is why. I ain't going to get to that yet. This is why it's a house of cards when you talk to some of these shows and these relationships. It ain't going to end well, man, because cats got to sit on that. You imagine all them rocks you sitting on while you arguing over somebody else. Y'all arguing over some other player, Russell Westbrook. And then y'all know y'all got beef with each other. Oh, y'all know y'all caught up in a press, so it's going to end all kind of weird ways. But they're not firing Skip. Y'all need to get off that. Shannon, they're not going to fire Shannon either. Shannon got clout now. However, Fox is good with, like, letting y'all both coexist. I'll get to that later. But they'll let you coexist, but they, like, we ain't doing the beef stuff because they had that issue with Brandon Marshall, uh, Nick Wright, and I think that really stained the brain of some of those execs. They're like, oh, no, we ain't going to have nobody hating somebody on our network anymore. So that's where that went. But both guys are in great job security. If you ask me whose job is safer, I think old reliable. I think Skip's job is safer. You know, not saying he's better or any of that stuff. I'm just saying he's safer. Plus, Shannon, you know, that spry young man. <laughs> he could speak a pop off and do some other stuff because that club Shay Shay is rocking. And Skip's podcast is not. <laughs> that shit dry. Woo! Come on, Skip. You better than that. Reading paper and just talking. Come on, dog. We we better than that. But he's the king in terms of debating. He's certainly the king on in undisputed. But they throwing rocks at the throne. You better watch your back because they coming for your head. This got me into a conversation because some fans kept hitting me up. And they was like, dog, you ever beef with any of your co-hosts? I was like, any? Damn near all of them. So I'm going to try and get through this. And I ain't going to take all day. Uh, because y'all know I, I, I beef with a smile. I laugh at my pain. I love levity. So anytime you got a problem with me, I'm going to giggle your ass away. So let's start with some of these beefs. Uh, since I've had the most co-hosts probably in the business, uh, you know, I got passed around like a Figueroa flipper. Let me let me get some of these beefs out there. Max Kellerman, let's start there. Max and I almost got a fight, got into a fight in front of Starbucks downstairs ESPN one day. Don't ask me why. From my perspective, I don't know why we were about to fight, but I knew what I was mad at. And it wasn't particular. It was in general. Max was talking too much. I was like, damn, dog. Now, I was deferring because Max had already done radio before and I was new to it. I was deferring because Max is so damn talented. He's a genius and he's funny as hell. And he had this persona going where he was acting like he was from Watts and I'm from Compton and he was harder than me and, you know, him, the rapper, all that stuff, like all the stuff that bonded us. I loved it. But I got the I got the stick. I got the persona. But I was like, dog, sometimes we got to talk real. You know me. I like to talk real, talk deep, talk layered. I was like, let's do that. And Max just go back to his same old pull the string and go back to I'm from Watts. And I'm like, dog, I'm trying to drop some jewels, some Wallyisms. And that was just in general. I was frustrated. Like, dog, stop talking so much. <laughs> and he'll interrupt you, especially if you win and you're getting a point off on him. He'll, That's enough. That's enough. That's my dog. I love that dude so much. But anyway, that's how I felt. I don't know why we went 
we were walking out the studio and then we were talking, we were talking, we were walking next to each other. It was contentious. And then we kind of squared up. Now, Max ain't no punk. He squared up for real. Not like he was going to swing, but like, I ain't going to back down kind of square up. And I squared up just because I was like, man, you talk too much. <laughs> just chill. I'm not going to swing, dog. And you don't want me to swing because even if I can't fight, and I know you're a boxing analyst, these hands, these paws going to hurt. And I wasn't going to do jack. But I just remember us having a moment of beef <laughs> right in front of Starbucks. I remember that moment. I remember the moment I had beef with Michelle Beadle. Now, I want to tell y'all who we had beef over, but because that person is still super famous and I protect the guilty, so I can't say their name. Um, but I was on air one day and I talked about that person in a glowing fashion because I love that person still to this day. But I also love Mama Beetle. I love Michelle, right? But I didn't know Michelle didn't love her. <laughs> I was like, what? So I'm just doing the show. I'm doing the show, whatever, giggling all through it. It's Sports Nation. I mean, damn, who could be mad on Sports Nation? That lets you know I was right and Michelle was wrong, right? Anyway, um, all of a sudden I could just hear, you know, the responses between her and I getting shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, whatever. Then somebody, one of the producers called me in, was like, trying to hit me to it they were trying to tell me what happened but also kind of like leaning like yeah don't do that again i was like fool do what again bring up my homie Psh, you know that's happening they were like well oh excuse me i hope y'all didn't hear that mm. over here got the bubble guts um i hope <laughs> stupid um they were like yeah don't do that again i was like what do what i want to do your bees ain't gonna be happy. Oh, like, well, she better get happy. <laughs> Cause, and then we had a meeting. I remember we had a meeting in the morning and we sitting around this conference room talking about this issue. And all I said was, you want me to hate who you don't like? I said, is this third or fourth grade? I don't do that. I was like, look, out of love and respect, I ain't know you even had a problem. I ain't got to bring them up. I certainly won't go out of my way to bring them up. But if they Get brought up. Relax. It ain't It ain't to stir up a beef. Oh, you really didn't know we had beef? No. <laughs> I do not go around tallying beefs because I don't have any. So, no, I didn't. But that was funny. Oh, Acho. Let me get to Acho. Oh, man. Acho and I never had beef. I knew Acho before he came on Speak for Yourself. Um, So, I didn't have beef with Acho. But Acho and I had this like pulling in different directions stuff. You know, I think what Acho, he wants to be a star if he's not a star already. Like from hello, I knew he wanted to be a star, right? Me, I just want to do the work. So we're pulling in different directions in that way. When you want to be a star, you'll, you want to pop off. You want to get it in. You want it to play big. And I didn't have that ambition. I didn't have that aspiration. I just wanted to do my job and do it the right way, the best way. So that's how we kind of, on the show, doing it together as partners, that was the first time I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. We're going in different directions. And then immediately I started to hear stuff and know stuff that was like, oh, man, we ain't going to be partners like I want to be. But it's all good because I could work with anybody. He wanted his own show from Hello, right? from hello i didn't now here's the problem and i didn't have a problem except <laughs> if you my boy you my partner you let me know this he wanted his own show and didn't want to tell me he was working to try and get his own show now if you would have just came to me like dog i love working with you but i'm trying to get mine bro man you already know i'll be like yeah as you should but i didn't hear it that way i heard it through grapevine I heard it from bosses. I heard it from contemporaries. And if you Google, you can see way back, like when we first started, Acho was going to get his own show. And he was going to the boss's crib and, you know, I guess designing and scheming it out. And I tried to stay out of that. And everybody wanted me to get riled up and mad. I was like, dog, first of all, if he wants his own show and gets it, what am I to say to that? That means I'm not the one that they want. And that's fine by me. 
Like I don't beg for no job. I just work my ass off to keep it. And if I don't do it and if I can't keep it, it wasn't mine. Move on. So I wasn't tripping. I was like, I'm not mad at that dude. Like he, he ambitious. Let him go get it. And if he gets it, then it ain't mine. That's how I always felt about it. You know, I've heard, you know, the reports, they were all hanging and conspiring. I was like, man, let them live. I'm not tripping. But then I started to realize there were times on the show where when you're not pulling in the same direction, uh, you leave your other partner out to dry, right? Like you ain't there for them because there's a rooting interest that is selfish. There's a rooting interest that this is going to turn out for you and you want it to turn out for you, not for us. And I, you know, knowing that information and watching him kind of not always be there for me. Cause you, y'all can watch back. I show, I say something, I should be like, wow, I can't believe you said that, but not in the way of like, man, that was, that was amazing. That was astounding. That was profound. It was more like, Oh, that's taboo. I was like, damn, dog. Don't be trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> so it was funny. But all love with Acho, he knows it. Don't mean anything's perfect. The only thing perfect about us was our imperfections. <laughs> um, but I love the dude. But I knew from hello he wanted his. And now he kind of got it. You know, he kind of got it. it it's, it's an ensemble, but he's leading the charge. So good for him. And that's what he wanted. And frankly, good for me, because this is what I want. Adam Sheffer, Adam Schefter and I had a, a little beef, indirect. He got mad, told the bosses, everybody, had a whole ESPN PR on me, <laughs> made me uh, give one of those fake apologies, and I said it too. Because <laughs> you remember Jim Harbaugh was going to Michigan, but before that, everybody was dragging it out and trying to guess and have Vegas bet nods and what was going to happen. My boy is a recruiter. He's a recruiter, like for Fortune 500 companies, et cetera, right? And he hit me one day. He's like, big dog, look at this. He sent me a picture of Jim Harbaugh's signature and contract to go to University of Michigan. I said, whoa. So I just went on my show casually like I do and just said it like that. And I ain't know, but boy, did it snowball. Interview, 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 interview. And then all of a sudden, my producer came in through me giving all these interviews and saying it on our show. I think it was Max and Marceau's, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, um, we need for you to retract what you said or apologize for saying that. I was like, for what? It's true. <laughs> you want to see the contract? No, it's not that. It's just protocol. And Adam, you know, really was upset. I was like, oh. And see, I was like, this ain't my lane anyway. So since this ain't my lane, I'm about to apologize and not mean it. I'm going to apologize. I don't mean it. I only apologize because this is how he butters his bread. I don't. I don't break news. I ain't trying to do that. So I get that part. But damn. <laughs> Y'all want me to do all that? They wanted me to just act like I didn't even know. I don't know where Harbaugh going. I don't think Harbaugh going anywhere. I was like, y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all want to hear something crazy? Whitlock and I got into a couple of them. Um, ours were more contentious because Whitlock ain't never scared, right? In his dressing room, too. Whitlock had that bomb dressing room, too. That VIP dressing room with a shower in it or something, I think. <laughs> something. It was bigger than mine. I know that. That's all I know. Mm. But um, we were beef because Whitlock is big on like being a journalist and journalism, right? The integrity of doing this the right way. And no matter who you are as the athlete, Whitlock feels the distance between him and his journalistic integrity and us and just our playing experience and us articulating it. So he ain't give us full respect. He ain't give me full respect all the time, even though that's my boy and that's my dog. He was just like, you're an athlete. You ain't a journalist. It's a different animal. And sometimes I actually agree with him. <laughs> like, I'm like, I hear you. Not all the time, but sometimes. But a couple of times we had a little issue in the conversation. Temperature was rising as we were going through those. And I remember the execs, <clears throat> I had to take a walk with the execs after a couple of them. 
And this is why I know that Fox, you know, Skip and Shannon, they'll let you coexist. They were like, yeah, we don't want this to turn into any hateful situation. Do you want to do another show? Do you want to work somewhere else, et cetera? And I was like, nah. I said, man, we argue, but I ain't mad. Like, I could argue with you because that's just a heated disagreement and then move on. But uh, I remember all that going down. It was a second or two, but it was uh, it was real. But Whitlock ain't no punk, dog. Whitlock be talking it. I was like, dog, don't be talking to me like that. We almost got into it. It was real. Somebody I never got into it with, um, Colin Coward. But, um, like, Colin is nice. But it's always like, I'm always following Colin. So I think Colin got mad at me or, like, just, man, get off my ass. Like, you know what I mean? A couple of times. Like, because Colin did Sports Nation, then I did Sports Nation. And it was weird because... I was not taking his job. I was not Wally Pippen, but couldn't Wally Pip him. But when you when you go on break or absence or you know take a day off, and then the other guy gets all that love and attention, you kind of feel like man. And sometimes I was like, he ain't being as nice as I know he can be to me sometimes. But maybe that was just me reading into it because everybody kept telling me that. But um, then he comes to Fox, and then he does speak for yourself first. Then I do it. So I know Colin's like, man, if this dude don't get off me, old back jean, back pocket jean looking at. <laughs> but me and Colin never had beef. I just, sometimes I'll be like, you don't like me that much, huh? Because I keep taking what you don't want. <laughs> Carrie, champion, my girl. Oh, Carrie used to just, I don't know what was up with Carrie when we used to work together. She used to call me Captain Patience. And it's like, Marcella, she were just so sweet and nice and so level-headed. I was like, yeah, because you just be coming to Carrie coming there sometimes and just be mad at it. And mad at what? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. But it was, it was fun because Carrie's a talent. Like, Carrie is eloquent. Like, that's it. Eloquent. But... And elegant, damn there. And then gangster, too. Now, now that's my homie. Um, but she used to be mad sometimes. I used to put out the fires for her. I remember one time we was downstairs for a minute. Now, I had to I had to put the fire extinguisher to something she was mad at. Never me, but just something I was always around. Steven Jackson and I, man, that's my dog. But uh, remember him and Kwame and Matt Barnes all got into it? Steven was not happy with me for... He thought I sided with Kwame. I don't side. I just think Kwame got some shots off. Shit was funny. <laughs> Kwame funny. I don't know what Kwame up to now. That way for me, I don't watch it a ton. But I do still have some of my uh, memorabilia and souvenirs. Uh, Mama's cooking glass. All that. I bought some shirts. I got it all. But the point is, Steven is my dog. Like, I'm way closer. I don't even know Kwame Brown. But I'm way closer to Steven Jackson. So I was kind of mad that he got mad at me. I was like, what? He just got a joke off on you. But I guess at that time, one of your boys laughing at you when the world seemed like they really heckling you doesn't feel good. So, you know, I apologize for that because I love Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes. Those are my dogs. But I was laughing. And Acho got off. <laughs> Acho got some good ones off. He said, CVS receipts long. <laughs> he got some jokes off. But Steven came on our show after that. And I was like, oh, he's going to be mad at me. And he certainly was mad at me. We went to commercial or something. He was like, yeah, dog. You know, he had that Tupac and Juice voice. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, dog. <laughs> that Kwame shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That Kwame. I was like, what? I don't even remember what the beef was. Like, he went further than that. I said, Steven, I know you're not really going to be mad at me at that. And now he's not. <laughs> That's how it was. Um, somebody that... I didn't beef with, but we just were oil and water, and it wasn't even fair because I like him as a person. He's actually like, well, he used to be my neighbor almost. Sean Farnham, man, I was doing the show with Max, and I, I forget who next and what next. And then they brought Sean in, and Sean came in hot. <laughs> he came in hot, and we had the same agent. So my agent was like, yo, how's it working out? And this is the first time I ever did this in my life. I was like, because it's radio and it's four hours long, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do it with Sean um, because 
he's just too loud and he's just too hot. He's just and he want to talk college basketball. <laughs> I was like, I don't know nothing about no college basketball. John Wood, John Wooden still coaching. Like, and, I, and on top of that, I was just like, dog. I know. I mean, look, it was my show, and I ain't run them off. I just told him, look, I don't want to do the show like that. So then I think we brought it. Did we bring in Eric Allen? Yeah, I think so. It was Eric. Yeah, and then he got in trouble, and I don't know. Eric Davis, Eric Davis, not Eric Allen. And then I was like, yeah, I got him. whatever. So Sean Farnham, I apologize, but you already know. Um, and they should have did another show with him and stuff, but whatever. He's still balling. He's still killing it. And he's doing his thing. He gets to talk college basketball, <laughs> right? All right. Basically, to sum all that up, man, I got more stories, but I don't even know. I forgot I have my partners. 